Hi, and welcome to this introductory video on the Multi-Agent Transport Simulation Toolkit, or just MATSIM for short. In the first part of this three-part series, we argued on why modeling is necessary, and you can click on the little man if you missed that. In the second part, we talked about why we need a new way of looking at transport modeling, and if you missed that part, just click on the female figurine. In this third part, we give an overview of how MATSIM works. If you want to see all the other videos in this MATSIM training series, click on the YouTube logo. Here is an example of where we typically work towards with a MATSIM model. You will be able to model a large area like we're showing here for the Nelson Mandela Bay metropolitan area. Each vehicle is modeled individually, representing an agent. And you can track each one of them, because we model at such a disaggregate level. The simulation model is over a 24-hour planning horizon. Here you see a colored flash each time an agent starts an activity. A blue flash means someone arrived home. A red flash means someone arrived for work. And you can see the different colors there on the screen. Green for education, yellow for shopping, pink for leisure, and white for other activities that also include commercial vehicle activities. You now see that it's 4 o'clock in the morning, and there is some activity going on in Nelson Mandela Bay. From about 6 onwards, you see a lot more work activities, and around 7, half past 7, when schools start, you see a huge amount of green activities. Once the kids are at school, parents actually have the opportunity to, to get some shopping done as well. As soon as school comes out, about one o'clock, half past one, Education decreases significantly and you now see a lot of home activities starting as kids arrive back home. By the way, these animations are generated using VIA, a visualizer specifically developed for MATSIM results. It is a commercial product developed by Dr. Marcel Risser and Dr. Michael Balmer from Senezon a spin-off company from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, or ETH, in Zurich, Switzerland. Go and check out their website to see what amazing analysis you can do with MATSIM results. Speaking of which, who is MATSIM and who's behind MATSIM? It is mainly developed by two groups, one under the leadership of Professor Kai Nagel at the Technical University of Berlin, and the other under the leadership of Professor Kai Axhausen at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, and as I mentioned, the ETH spin-off, Senozon. Does Senozon mean anything? Yes, it's actually pretty clever. Just read the name backwards. Alright, so how exactly does MATSIM work? Let's go through it step by step. For starters, you will need a synthetic population of agents. A bunch of people that represents the population, both in terms of their demographics and travel demand. Each agent must at least have a single plan that indicates the sequence of activities, with each pair of activities linked by a leg. And all the information is stored in XML format. Here you see a person, number 6122710. It's a male of 27 years old, who owns a license, has a car available, and is employed. He's got one plan that starts with a home activity of type H11. The home is associated with a link, an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a start time, as well as an end time. Next, he travels by car, following a specific route and travel time, or at least expect a travel time. The next activity is work of type W10. Again, the activity associated with a link with a coordinate and a start time. Next we need a network that represents the physical transport infrastructure that the agents can use. At least in South Africa, 
we make heavily use of OpenStreetMap. There are tools in Matsum to help convert an OpenStreetMap data into a Matsum ready road network. And for computational reasons, we actually clean up that network. The input data is read into the simulation along with other simulation configuration settings by means of a config file, which is also in XML format. Each agent then randomly picks one of the plans from memory and executes it in a mobility simulation. Matsum essentially uses a queue simulation. As agents move between activities, they travel from one link to the next. There are some practical and intuitive benefits. We have a realistic holding capacity for the links. We know what the length of each link is and also the number of lanes. So we know what the physical space is that vehicles have access to. And once a link is full, it's full. And this is very different from the state of practice models that by design assumes that you are everywhere on your journey simultaneously. This queue based approach means that we can model spillbacks in Matsum. And as you and I know, when we're at the back of the queue and the light in front turns green, we cannot immediately move when the first vehicles start to clear the link. No, it takes some time. In the same way in Matsum, those empty spaces must first move to the back of the queue in the opposite direction of the vehicle flow. And once it gets to the back of the queue, capacity is released for vehicles to enter. Once the simulation is done, each agent scores their executed plan. And this score is often different to the expected score. The score is expressed in terms of utility. And the total utility earned is the sum of all the components. An agent earns positive utility for performing or participating in an activity, negative utility for traveling, negative utility for waiting, such as arriving too early at work or at the shop when the facility is not open yet, and negative utility for leaving early or arriving late at work, for example. Each activity type has its own log function with decreasing marginal utility. Here's an analogy, and maybe men appreciate this more easily. If you spend an hour shopping, you get X amount of utility. Spending two hours, ladies, does not mean you get 2x units of utility, rather something like 1.8. In the co-evolutionary setting, in which the agents tries to maximize their own utility, the simulation evolves to a point where the marginal utilities of the different activities become similar. In other words, when an agent has a good plan, the slope of the utility functions for the different activities tend to be the same. That's still a bit of an oversimplification, but our discussion will be sufficient for now. We will have a future video tutorial dedicated to just the scoring function. Each utility component can be made up out of a time and a monetary component. For example, traveling by bus not only takes time, but also has an explicit cost in terms of fare. To convert time and money to a unitless utility, we use these beta terms. Beta time is the marginal utility of time and is measured in utilities per hour. When multiplied by time, measured in hour, the hour cancels out. Similarly, beta money is the marginal utility of money measured in units per rand or units per euro, whatever your currency. I'm often asked, yes, but how do you measure and estimate the marginal utility of money? That's quite a valid question. But it's not so much the actual values of beta time and beta money that we're interested in, but rather the ratio of beta time to beta money. Why? When we divide beta time by beta money, we end up with a value measured in rands per hour. That's it, you've guessed right, the value of time. And it would be plausible to fix the marginal utility of time for all agents. That is, all agents only have 24 hours per day, so they should value their time similarly. Their income, however, may differ. And we know that from census data, for example. So if we make the marginal utility of money a function of an agent's income, we basically can build a model in which each agent has a unique value of time. And this is indeed possible in Matsum. So each agent scores the executed plan and updates the plan's utility value. Next, a set proportion of the agents are allowed to replan. As in real life, most people stick to their routines while a fraction tend to make some changes in an attempt to improve their utility. 
In many Matsum implementations that I've seen, you often find three strategies. Firstly, agents choose from their current plans, and the plans that are expected to perform better have a higher probability of being chosen. Secondly, agents can change the activity timing, leaving home earlier, arriving later at a friend's house, etc. And thirdly, they can reroute to find a shorter path, either in terms of time, or distance, or cost. But you can employ other strategies too, like allowing agents to switch mode or choose a different shopping location. And because Matsum is so modular, you can write your own replanning strategies. Once each agent has selected a plan for the next iteration, the mobility simulation starts and the agents execute their plans. And this process repeats iteratively until the agents cannot really improve their suite of plans by much. It is not equilibrium, but we call it a steady state. For each agent, we can take the best plan from their memory and average over the population, and then we get the green line. If we average over the last executed plan for each agent, we get the blue line. And the average over each agent's worst plan is the red line. And you see how the utilities converge over time as the agents learn and adapt to their environment. You also see how the average trip duration improves and converges to a minimum. For the purpose of analysis, we typically use the average of the executed plans. That's realistic. You and I are not able to always perfectly choose the best plan for the day. So, do we get it right? We believe so. Here we compare ourselves against the traffic counts over a 24-hour period using data from the South African National Roads Agency, SANROL for a number of counting stations across Gauteng. Blue is the number of vehicles that we've simulated to pass on that link, and the orange is the average number of vehicles counted on that link for that specific hour. Sure, there are cases where we get it wrong. Here you see, for example, we hit a plateau, and it turns out that we used three lanes for those road segments, where in actual fact there were four lanes. So we simply couldn't fit more vehicles on the link, hence we kept undercounting. But now it becomes much more intuitive to improve the model. We can clean the data and update it on OpenStreetMap, and voila! Not only is it updated, the improved network is now available to everybody, because we work with free data. So over the next few tutorials, we are going to show you how to set up Matsum and get it running. The outline is as follows. The first tutorial helps you set up all the necessary software. Second, be before jumping right in, we found there are some basic concepts, let's call them tools, that are valuable to have, especially if you're new to them and do not do a lot of programming in your day-to-day -day life. The two we will cover in this series is how to work with repositories. What are they and how do you use them? And also reading in and writing to text files using Java. Then the real Matsum stuff starts. How do we build a network? And then, how do we build a population? Once you've got the network and population, you're good to go. Is your model performing the way it should? Well, we'll see. We'll show you how to work with traffic counts, and also how to look at and analyze the events that the agents generate throughout the simulation. But what then? The goal is not merely to model a city's status quo. We don't just build models for the sake of models. No, we want to use them to evaluate scenarios and see what might work best in future. To do that, we will model a few scenarios and see how the agents react. You can access these tutorials by clicking here on the YouTube icon. That'll take you to the channel playlist that we've set up for this series of tutorials. Some of these themes have been broken up into multiple parts, so just check out the names and I'm sure you'll quickly figure out how they stick together. If you've got any questions or feedback, you're welcome to Skype me using Johan W. Huber. Thank you for joining this introductory video, and I hope you'll check out the other videos in the series too. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm.